So someone once characterized or described the church as an event. Now today I want to both agree and argue with this characterization. I see what he means, but I think there is something missing in his idea. But let's first, though, agree with him. So what he was getting at was that we cannot identify the church with a particular building or denomination or even any particular community of believers. The church, rather, is an event of God's grace. Sometimes this or that community, this or that denomination, this or that gathering will in fact be church. And what are its marks? The marks of the church are that we will get it right for once. We will be the hands and feet of God in the world. We will be a reconciling people, a peacemaking people, a welcoming people, feeding the hungry, sheltering the homeless, comforting the sick and the dying, being the place where seekers will come and feel welcome. Within this or that community, those who are present will experience God's grace overflowing, making us whole. So you see, on this definition, no group of human beings, no institution, no denomination could ever be that everywhere and always. And so to illustrate this, I'm going to tell you a little story about a community that I'm part of. So many years ago, three people, myself, Bo Davis, and June Goforth, decided to start a centering prayer group. Bo had just begun learning centering prayer from June. June had been practicing for many years. She had been part of a group at St. James, and she was really the backbone of the group, guiding Bo and myself, being a source of wisdom as only she can be, and experience. We began on Monday nights, about 16 years ago or so. Through the years, many would come and see. Some would come and stay for a while. Others would come for a time and then not because other things in life would take over. The group could have as little as three of us, maybe once there was only two of us, and as many as seven or eight. But small though we were, we just kept coming back. We were trying to practice this form of silent prayer because I'm not sure exactly why. I think we were hungry, thirsty, seeking something. Maybe seeking silence in a hectic world. Maybe seeking to be gathered together when in our lives we felt scattered. Maybe seeking to find the sacred, even though it kept feeling like when we would look up, the sacred would sail off to the other side of the lake. I hope you caught the reference there to the gospel reading and the gathering of fragments after the feeding of the 5,000. Now, I can't really speak for everyone who comes to Centering Prayer, but... That is why I go. So anyway, we were all committed. And like I said, we just kept coming back. Jesus will say to his first disciples, come and see. It's an invitation to experience his incarnate wisdom. It's an invitation to experience a new life. A life that in John's gospel is called eternal life which is a familiar translation of an actually very difficult word in Greek. But as long as you don't think of eternal life as being just completely about some other world that you might get after to after death, and rather think of it as a kind of sacred or divine life that we can participate in, even though a little imperfectly now, in our very flesh and bones, crashing into each other, here and now. If you think of it that way, then it's an adequate translation. 
Anyway, this group formed me through the years. And now we have more folks. We've got this professor of peace. We have maybe what I might call a recovering evangelical. We have a newly minted lawyer who is just out of his first job after law school. We have at least one neurotic, and that would be me. But if I don't mention you, you can put yourself in that group too if you, if you feel like it. We have a young person who did mention the other day that Central Park was a great place to have a psychedelic experience. We have an ex-teacher who's now a plumber. We have choir members and altar guild folks, gardeners, people who give their lives for this place. And especially those who struggle in our church and community. We've got one newly returned pilgrim, former veterinarian, who wonders occasionally, what's up with the whole priest thing in the Episcopal Church? Some have literally wandered in off the street one Monday. It's a band, I think, an eclectic band of mystics and seekers. I think, I don't know if it was Flannery or Connor or James Joyce who said, here comes everyone in describing the church. It's an eclectic group. And the discussions are not always easy to shepherd, since we'll have one question about how this whole centering prayer thing is similar or not to Buddhist meditation and Buddhist thinking, and then another question about whether God is or is not well described by the term ultimate mystery. So we come together, and we pray, and we talk, and maybe we walk out different, and maybe we don't. It's a community, though, which, to which everyone is welcome, and I can find grace there. It helps me in my life as a doctor, as a priest, and as a husband, and as a father, and as a friend. It helps me to come back and remind myself of what kind of life I want to live and have, what kind of work I still have to do. And in the end, it is really all about each moment surrendering to the work of God in me. In that way, it is church as an event. Because the group, definitely as it is currently constituted, will not be here forever. But God is here and will always be here. God cannot be contained by any building or prayer method or even group. But God promises to be there when we gather. And that's where I disagree with the characterization of the church as an event. Centering prayer is not the only way I seek God. Not the only way I seek Jesus, the way the crowds in their hunger sought him. I also seek God here in this sanctuary, at the altar when we take the bread and wine, the bread of heaven and the cup of salvation. I also seek God when we gather together after liturgy or before liturgy and in our works together. There is something sacred here that cannot and will not die. So even when a church community must dissolve, for I know that there are folks who are here in our community who have experienced that. It can be painful and one can doubt the whole eternal nature of the church. But what has dissolved is the incarnation at a particular place and time of a gathering, of a community. What has not dissolved is the spirit that gathered that community. And that spirit lives on in each of their hearts. To put it another way, when someone wants to seek God or the word of God or the sacred, they might not be able to go to the church of their childhood. But there is a church somewhere, on some street corner or other, where they can start. And that way the church lives on and seems to be more than a transitory event in our lives. It has a certain permanency. All right. So I told you all of that because I want to comment on one line from the gospel. It's this. Then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? And Jesus answered them, 
This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. Now, this kind of language in John's gospel can be a stumbling block. Works become belief. Belief is a work. And it can sometimes feel exclusive, like if you don't believe, like if you doubt or something for a second or two, well, you're destined for death. Now, what my whole parable of the church that I told above was trying to get us to experience is that belief is not intellectual assent only. It is grace. It is community. It is faithfulness to others. It is a seeking. It is an entering into a new life. Belief is joining. John was writing during a time when the Jewish community was trying to figure out who these Christians were. John is saying, come and see. Come and join us. This Jesus, he is of God. He is from God. He was with God. He is wisdom incarnate. His teachings are manna. This belief is not just a recitation of a creed. It's a following of a way. And that way is life. And so, friends, where do you find life? Where do you find community? Where do you find the sacred? Be faithful to that. Be faithful to the people who you gather with. Be faithful to each other. Listen and love each other. Stop grumbling and murmuring. Give yourself. Stop holding back. That's the work. It is not doing this thing or that thing. It's not even doing many things. It's doing one thing. And that one thing is not necessarily centering prayer. It's seeking. For if you seek, you will find. At least that is the promise of the gospel. And as for me, that is good enough. Amen.